So I, I grew up in Chicago, I'm near Humboldt Park. Kind of got involved with the, the gang life a little bit just because it was kind of pick or choose. And it just got into, it got really dicey there. So I was very blessed to, <laughs> to have moved away from that area. And um, upon gradu before graduation, I knew I wanted to join the military. And um, that's where my heart was set in to do special ops. In the Air Force, it was called combat control. And by far, that is still the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. It was a constant swim underwater, 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 underwater. And being alone with my own thoughts, it started drowning me. Uh, they mentally broke me. When I was in the pool, like that's where I knew like things were going bad for me. And um, I remember surfacing and saying I quit. And I started the process to become a helicopter pilot. And everything, everything going, was going well with that. I was studying a lot, but at the same time I was doing all this, I started drinking a lot. Because in the back of my mind, uh, what happened with special ops really didn't mess me up, but I didn't want to admit it. And without realizing, I was falling into a, a deep depression. I didn't allow anyone to say, see it. Didn't allow my wife to see it. And I remember uh, one time I was pumping gas and some random stranger walks up to me. He looks at me and he's like, I feel like there's something wrong with you. Like, can I pray for you? I said, thank you, but I'm good. So I kept on doing what I was doing. And I get a letter through from medical saying I'm disqualified due to, a, due to a head injury I had years ago. And when they told me I couldn't be a helo pilot anymore, I just, I panicked. I panicked because there goes my next, there, there went my other goal. Now, now what's next? And I, I cried to my wife and no response, no comfort. And, um, I didn't know. I don't know what was going on with her, with me, with the military. I didn't know. So my only, my only friend was just beer. And the military failed. My marriage failed. All this failed. And now I'm like, what am I doing? What am I doing? I was in a dark place. And uh, luckily, um, my, my first day of college, I met a, a friend. Her name was Elise. And she was, she invited me here and there and uh, one day she caught me in a good time and I was like yeah I'll go with you. I showed up to, to Willow Wheaton uh, around towards the end of March. Uh, I was still processing a lot of things going on in my life but some, whatever was said in the sermon that day it hit home for me and I just I just lost it and the next service I attended I came on my own and I was sitting next to a uh, a couple right next to me, uh, their name is Laird and Rayleigh Riggs, and I lost it that day there too. And uh, they were there next to me and they saw me. They brought me down to, to meet Reese. And I talked to Reese for a good while. And uh, they helped me, they asked me if I wanna accept Jesus Christ as my savior. And I said something I honestly didn't think I would ever say in my life. And I said, yeah. Yeah, so I want to do that. Reese asked me about Alpha. And I'm like, okay, like, uh, I'll give it, a, give it a shot. And Larry said, just so I wouldn't feel alone, he would come along with me. I mean, if it wasn't for Larry, I probably wouldn't have showed up. The Alpha group definitely helped me so much to get started with, like, understanding, like, Christianity, because I was like, all right, let's go. I mean, there's still some things I was like, yeah, I don't really, really fully buy that but I'm like as time kind of progresses as I put my walls down as I put my ego and pride to the side I'm like okay like I I understand this I see I see why people like are so drawn into faith and Christianity like gives them strength and even now looking back in the past like I've realized that God has always been there even though I was too proud to ever admit it having that stranger come up to me for a prayer even people in my, my command, my leadership, and my, some of my mentors were people of faith. And uh, I don't know, things just, just, things just look so much brighter. And just knowing that you have a friend like God, basically. And def it definitely has helped my transition over from the military tremendously throughout the divorce, throughout all this stuff. It has helped me keep in line and on a better life. Definitely, definitely invite your friends, invite people, invite strangers. Invite somebody you might see down in the dumps. You never know like what that one visit could do to somebody.
It changed my life in a way I didn't think it was going to. Like I, I told her I was coming to church, but I didn't think it was going to have that much of an effect on me. You never know wh where somebody is in their life. And that invite just to uh, come to Willow Eaton and help them experience the love of God would definitely change their life and did mine.